Hello and welcome to another exam paper walkthrough. Today we are uh, moving on with our um, half paper series. Uh, so we're doing a GCSE Maths Edexcel half paper revision and this is going to be a higher paper. And today we're going to be concentrating on a calculator paper. So this is taken from their practice set 1A. So they've split it into 45 minute papers. Um, so a half paper and this is the paper 2, the calculator paper. Uh, that's a copy of the paper um, attached to the uh, the thread to this video or the description to this video is a Google Drive where you can uh, download a copy of this paper. I would strongly recommend you've either done this already um, and done the paper or alternatively that you do it alongside the video. Um, and uh, please, uh, hopefully you find it useful. Um, you can always find um, all my other videos at, at Mr. D Does Maths. And uh, please uh, remember, subscribe if you like. Okay, um, so this is the paper, and we will make a start. So question one. Ali is planning a party. He wants to buy some cakes and some sausage rolls. Uh, the cakes are sold in boxes. There are 12 cakes in each box. Each box of cake costs £2.50. The sausage rolls are sold in packs. There are eight sausage rolls in each pack. Each pack of sausage rolls costs £1.20. Ali wants to buy more than 60 cakes and more than 60 sausage rolls, and he wants to buy exactly the same number of cakes and sausage rolls. What is the least amount of money uh, Ali will have to pay. Um, so to start this off, I'm going to find the lowest common multiple of uh, 12 and 8. Well, it's not necessarily going to be my uh, the number that I work with, uh, because I also need to uh, it to be the lowest common multiple. That oh no, I need it to be a common multiple. Uh, it needs to be the lowest common multiple greater than 60. If that makes sense. Um, so the most straightforward way uh, on a calculator paper of finding the highest common multiple, sorry, lowest common multiple of two numbers is to cancel it down as a fraction. Uh, so let me just bring up my calculator. Okay, um, so like eight and twelve, and that simplifies down to uh, two thirds. And then so the lowest common multiple is even the well is. Uh, both 8 times 3 or 12 times 2, so it's going to be 24. Uh, but 24 is not going to be the one that I'm going to be using because 24 is less than um, 60. So I want the, the lowest common multiple that is greater than 60, uh, but it's going to be in the 24 times table. Uh, so um, 24, 48, 72. So I'm going to have 72 of each. So I'm going to have 72 of each. So I need to work out the price then. Uh, to do that, then I'm going to do uh, 72 divided by 12 will tell me how many packets of uh, cakes he needs. Um, so I'm going to times that by 2 pounds 50. Um, to that, I'm going to by 8 times by 1 pound 20 or 1.2. And that's the sum that I'm going to do. So, um, 72 divided by 12, and I want to times that by 2.5. To that, I want to add 72 over 8 times by 1.2. So that's going to give me uh, £25.80. So uh, the price that it's going to cost him, or the cheapest it's going to cost him, is £25.80 to fit all of those that criteria okay question two uh, so we've got a uh, right angle triangle abc is a right angle triangle ab is six uh, ac is nine work out the length of bc giving your answer correct to three significant figures so we're using trigonometry to work out the uh, hypotenuse the longest side uh, so i tend to go x squared is going to be equal to six squared sorry i tend to just by habit put the largest side first uh, plus six squared so that's going to be 9 squared plus 6 squared gives me 117. So x is going to be equal to the square root of that. So the square root of that is 3 root 13. And then I'm going to go decimal. So as a decimal, that's going to be 10.81665 dot dot dot. So I haven't rounded. And then to round that to three significant figures, that's going to be 10.8. 
Question three. A town has three car parks. A south car park, uh, with ha which has X spaces. A north car park, which has 48 more spaces than the south car park. And a central car park, which has four times as many spaces as the south car park. A uh, total number of spaces in the south car park and the central car park is more than twice the number of spaces in the north car park. Work out the least possible numbers of spaces in the south car park. Um, so I'm just going to um, extract some of the information. So I've got south, north and a central. So the south car park has X spaces. The north car park has 48 more than that. So um, X plus 48. And the central car park has four times as many as the south. So that's going to be 4x. And let me just check that. Central has four times as many as the south. Yeah. Okay, the total number of spaces in the south car park and central car park. So that's uh, south and central. So let's add those together. That's going to be 5x. Is more than, is greater than, twice the number in the north car park. So it's more than two lots of uh, x plus 48. Okay, so from there, I'm going to look at um, trying to solve that. Um, so I'm going to do that by uh, multiplying that bracket. Uh, if that was an even number, then I might divide by 2 first of all. Um, but we'll say 4x has to be greater than 2x uh, plus uh, 96. Uh, I'm going to minus 2x from both sides. So 3x has to be greater than uh, 96. And then divide both sides by 3 would give me x has to be greater than uh, 32. Um, so work out the least possible number of spaces in the south in car park. So it can't be equal to 32. It's got to be greater than 32. So it's got to be 33. Okay, question four. A, B, C, D is a rectangle and we've got E, F, G, H is a trapezium. Uh, the perimeter of these two shapes are the same. All measurements are in centimetres. Work out the value of x. Um, so the perimeter of the rectangle, first of all, is going to be two lots of... Um, is going to be... Uh, so the perimeter is going to be two lots of this length plus this length. So that's going to be two lots of 7x uh, plus 4. And that's going to be equal to the perimeter of this one, which is going to be 10x uh, plus 8x. So that's going to be 18x and then minus 3, minus 3, minus 6. Um, so I could multiply that bracket out, but these two numbers, 18 and 6, both have a 2 in common. So I'm actually going to divide 3 by 2 as my starting point just to make things a little bit easier. Uh, so I'm going to say 7x plus 4 is equal to 9x minus 3. And then I'm going to take my x's over to this side and my number over to this side. So uh, three, sorry, 4 plus 3 is going to be 7. It's going to be equal to 2x. So uh, x is going to be equal to 3.5. Um, and is that all we're asked to work out? Work out the value of x. So I'm going 3.5. Um, and it does say there all measurements are in centimetres. So I don't really need centimetres as my unit because uh, it's implied within the question. Uh, write down the length and width of the rectangle. So the length and width of the, the rectangle was um, <coughs> 3x plus 4. So that's going to be uh, 7, 10.5 plus 4 is going to be 14.5 for the length. Let's just actually show that. Um, so what did I say? 3 times by uh, 3.5 plus, not much. Was it plus? Yeah, plus four. And the other length was is equal to 14.5. And then the other dimension was four times by 3.5, uh, which is going to be 14. Okay, and we have got the centimeters there. 
When Question 5. When a water pipe bursts, the water can cause damage. The damage can be minor or severe. The probability of minor damage is 0.55. The probability of severe damage is 0 0.45. Insurance claims can be made for the damage. When the damage is minor, the probability that the insurance claim is made is 0.22. When the damage is severe, the probability that the insurance claim is made is 0 0.74. Um, when the, uh, There we go. Um, and complete the decision tree diagram okay uh, so when the damage is minor the probability of the claim is 0.22 so we'll just put that in and then when the damage is severe the probability an insurance claim is made is 0.74 uh, so that's just processing the information from the question really um, and then working out the other values so it's going to be 1 minus 0.22 which is going to be 0.78 and then 1 minus uh, 0 0.74, which is going to be 0 0.26. Um, the insurance company uses the information in the decision tree diagram to decide whether they need to increase their charges for insurance. If the probability that insurance claim for damage will be made is greater than 50%, the insurance company will increase their charges for insurance. Will the insurance company increase their charges? Okay, the probability that insurance claim for damage will be made is greater than, so probability of um, an insurance claim being made is going to be uh, 0.55 times by 0.22 plus 0.45 times by 0.74, which is equal to so 0.55 times by 0.22 plus 0.45 times by 0.74 gives me. 0 0.454 so will the insurance company increase their charges no and i'm going to finish it with as uh, not as let's do it as a percentage as 45.4% is less than 50%. Okay, question six. The nth term of the sequence is n squared plus four. Alex says the nth term of the sequence is always a prime number when n is an odd number. Alex is wrong. Give an example to show that Alex is wrong. So it's not asking us to prove using algebra. It's just asking for an example. So uh, if we start with the first few odd numbers, one, three, uh, 5, 7, 9, and 11. And then I'm going to say what n squared plus 4 is. I'm going to use my calculator for this. I'm going to go into the table function. And the function of x that I'm going to type in is n squared plus 4. Um, but I'm actually going to type it as x squared plus 4. So alpha x squared plus 4. Don't need the second function of x. I want to start at 1. And I'm going Apologies, let me do that again. Sorry, press and equal just there. takes me all the way through the options. Uh, so let's do that again. Alpha x squared plus 4. And I want no function, no second function. I want to start at 1. I want to end, uh, I've only gone up to 11, but I'll go up to, let's say, 15. And I want to go in steps of 2. So uh, when my first odd one is going to produce 5, then 13, then 29, then 53, those all look like odd numbers at the moment. So let's go a bit further down, there we go, 85 and 125, neither of which are odd numbers. So um, 85 would be absolutely fine. So um, when n is equal to 9, n squared plus 4 is equal to 85, which is not prime. Not written prime very well. OK, 
Okay, question seven. Uh, liquid A has a density of uh, 0.7 grams per centimeter cubed. Liquid B has a density of 1.6 grams per centimeter cubed. 140 grams of liquid A and 128 grams of liquid B are mixed to make liquid C. Uh, work out the density of liquid C. Okay, um, well, uh, density is equal to mass divided by volume. I can always get that from the uh, compound unit here. Uh, grams is a measure of mass, volume is a measure of volume, centimetre cubed is a measure of volume. Um, right, so I'm going to do a very basic table for this to help me out. Um, I'm going to say we've got um, we've got liquid A, we've got liquid B, and we've got liquid C, and we're going to do mass, uh, volume, and density. So liquid A has a density of 0.7. Added liquid B has a density of uh, 1.6. Liquid A has a mass of 140 grams, and liquid B has a mass of 128. Right. And then this is actually the value that we want. So um, our mass doesn't change when we add the two liquids together. Our mass would just become the total of that. So that's going to be 268. Um, our volume, um, our density will change, but our volume, uh, again, won't. But we don't know the volume of each. So if we rearrange this equation, we get that volume is equal to density divided by mass. So if we do, sorry, I've got that the wrong way around. Um, volume is mass divided by density. So the volume of liquid A is going to be 104. Let's go back into our calculator mode. 140 divided by 0.7. So that's going to be 200. And then the volume of the liquid B is 128 divided by 1.6. So that's going to be 80. So liquid C will have a volume of 280. Uh, so it will have a density of um, so density is going to be equal to the mass 268 divided by 280. So 268 divided by 280 gives us uh, 0 0.957 uh, 1428 dot 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 uh, so I'm going to give it to let's say three decimal places so 0 0.957 to um, three decimal places Okay, uh, question eight. Fred is making two rectangular flower beds. The dimension of the larger rectangle will be three times the dimensions of the smaller rectangle. So the dimensions, okay. Uh, there is going to be the same depth of soil in each flower bed. Um, Fred needs uh, 180 kilograms of soil for the smaller flower bed. Work out how much soil Fred needs for the larger flower bed. Um, okay, so uh, as they're keeping the same depth, there'll be a scale, there'll be an area scale factor between the two uh, weights of soil. Um, so if we think um, if we've got letters for them, we haven't. So if we go smaller and larger, that's how they're referred to. If the length scale factor is one, two, three, then the area scale factor is going to be equal to one to three squared. So um, if the area of the smaller one, sorry, um, the weight of the smaller one is 180, um, it will be our times, and they've got the same depth, we've got the area relationship, so we're going to do uh, 180 times by three squared, uh, which is going to be 180 times by nine. So that's going to be uh, one, 1,620 kilograms. 
Question nine. Um, the histogram gives information about the speeds in kilometers per hours of some cars on a road. So we've got frequency density uh, versus speed. We've got a labeling of the frequency density. Uh, work out an estimate for the mean speed. Give your answer correct to one decimal place. You must show you're working. Okay, so uh, we can't work out the actual frequencies, um, but, but with a frequency den um, with a histogram, the median, it doesn't really matter. Um, we just want to split the area uh, into two. Uh, so we can make up our own scale. Uh, so to keep it nice and simple, how simple should we go? Yeah, well, that's fair enough. Uh, so I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to call that, actually say so going in decimals, 10, 20, 30, 40, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So, um, and then I'm going to label them on here, but uh, 5, 15, 10, um, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Um, so my total area, and I'm actually going to, um, because I'm going to need it later on, I'm going to write the area for each one into each one of these rectangles. Um, so the area of this one is going to be, it looks like, 38, I'm going to write it here, 38 times by 5, we'll stick down here, 38 times by 5 is going to give me 190. Um, the next one is going to be uh, 47 times by 15. So 47 times by 15 gives me 705. Uh, my next block is going to be 28 times by 10. So that's going to be 280. And then my final one, I can't quite fit it on the same line. Let's just move that man down. Um, so my final block is uh, 7 times by 30, uh, which is going to be uh, 210. So my total area, so total area is going to be equal to, uh, add those all together. So we've already got 705 there, so 190 plus 210. Plus 280. So we've got uh, 1385. So for my median, I'm looking. So for my median, I'm looking to be 690.5. Right, uh, so I'm going to take each of these away until I haven't got a bigger number. Uh, so if I do uh, take away 190, oops, take away 190, so I already know it's going to be hitting into this block. Okay, it's going to be hitting into this block. Uh, so let me just complete that. And minus 190 is going to be. Uh, 502.5. So I need to work out how far into this block that hits, and to do that, I need to divide the size of that block by uh, 47. So my next step is going to be 502.5 divided by 47. So that's going to be equal to. Uh, 10.69, um, but I need to add on 55.
Okay, um, so I want 10.69 into this block. Um, so I've just realized that I've, um, I've counted the square. It doesn't matter. Uh, I can just adjust my answer. So this is actually by the scale uh, out of this 15. Uh, I've called it 15, but in reality, um, they're going from 55 up to 62.5. So it's actually half of that. It's 7.5. So if I halve that now, um, so I'm going to say... Um, I'm going to do 55, which is this point time here, and I'm going to add on a half of 10.69. Uh, so that's going to be 55 plus my answer. So that gives me 60.34. Um, to one decimal place, so I'll do it there. Uh, Sixty point uh, three four five dot dot dot. So to one decimal place, that's going to be sixty point three. And my unit there is kilometers per hour. There we go. Um, so if you've used a different scale for any of your measurements, uh, that's absolutely fine. It doesn't really affect anything um, other than um, how you convert it back. Um, I think that's probably the most direct way. Um, if you've done it slightly differently, um, probably you've got the same answer, which you should do if you've done it correctly. Um, we should all get 60.3. Okay, question 10. Um, the line L is a tangent to the circle x squared plus y squared equals 48. So that's the equation of the circle uh, with radius of root 45 and center 0, 0. Um, at the point minus 3, 6, uh, the line L crosses the x-axis at the point P. Work out the coordinates of point P. Okay, so if I do a very basic, let me make sure I've got my blue pen on, just because I've done the whole paper in blue. A uh, very basic sketch. So we've got uh, very, very basic. Let me just put something slightly more um, accurate up. No, that'll, that, that'll be fine. Um, and we've got the point minus 3, 6 and minus 3, 6. So we've got kind of a point here. Uh, we need to work out the gradient of that line, which will give us the perpendicular gradient of L. And then we need to just find where it crosses the, sorry, where it crosses the y-axis. So the y-intercept. Okay, um, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do then is work out the gradient of the radius. Uh, so the m of radius is going to be equal to, uh, change in y divided by change in x. So 6 minus 0 divided by minus 3 minus 0 so that's going to be a uh, gradient of 2 minus 2 sorry minus 2 uh, so the perpendicular gradient or the gradient of L is going to be the negative reciprocal of that so that's going to be a half so my equation is going to be y is equal to a half x uh, plus c And we're going to put, put this point in. So we're going to put in minus 3, 6 to find out um, C. And then that is actually going to be our X coordinate. That's not it's going to be. Uh, OK. So we want this point here. So, OK, um, so let's get this far. So when X 6 is going to be equal to a half of minus 3 plus C. Uh, so that's going to be 6 is equal to minus 6. Um, so I've done that slightly wrong. Um, so that's going to be minus 3 over 2 uh, plus C. Uh, so if I add um, 1.5 to each side, that would be 7.5 is equal to c so my equation of my line is actually y is equal to a half x uh, plus seven and a half 
So we want the point where it crosses the x-axis. So where it crosses the x-axis is where y is equal to zero. Uh, so that means that um, zero is equal to a half x plus seven and a half. Uh, which would be 15 over 2. So if I double them both, that means that um, 0 is equal to x plus 15. So x would be equal to minus 15, meaning my coordinate is going to be minus 15, 0. Okay, and then that is the paper. Right, um, so I'm going to bring up um, at the end of the mark scheme, there's actually quite a nice table that I want to briefly discuss with you. Okay, um, so this is um, Edexcel's national performance data for um, from Results Plus uh, for this paper. Uh, so there are 10 questions. Uh, this question 10 is actually new to, was new to the uh, 9 to 1 course, so it, it hadn't been assessed on previously. Uh, that would have been tangents to equations of a circle, though. Um, but this max score is quite useful. Um, so this kind of, um, out of all the students that um, sat it, this is the average score, um, which is quite useful. Um, it kind of shows you that actually uh, question 21 was the most challenging question, or students found the most challenging on that paper. Uh, it's quite a useful table. Um, if you're um, looking for... Uh, specific revision uh, rather than just this general revision so each of those questions then is broken down into a topic uh, those are also the the chapter headings of uh, the video uh, so for example if you struggled most on chapter 21 you're not alone uh, but that would be a more specific revision on ratio uh, if you find uh, question uh, 9 the most challenging which was the histograms from group data uh, that's where you target your specific revision Okay, uh, thank you very much for your time and listening to the video. I hope you found it useful. Uh, if you've got any comments, questions, or feedback, please type it in as a chat, and I'll, I'll get back to you pretty quickly. I'm, I'm fairly prompt with getting back to people on there. Um, and if you found this useful, uh, please subscribe if you like.